This is Cameron Chai from azom.com and I'm speaking to Mike Fogarty from Rio Tech and he's going to take us through their automatic kinematic vescometer. Yes, the ASTM method for uh, doing uh, jet fuels, this particular system was developed to uh, automate uh, fuels in general, but uh, jet fuel testing, the viscosity, kinematic viscosity of uh, jet fuels. Uh, there's an ASTM method, ASTM D445, and it's a requirement of the method that we fully comply with the ASTM method. The Basically, we're automating this glass capillary viscometer. This is an ASTM uh, uvalotor viscometer. Uh, that's uh, used to measure the, uh, the fluid. The sample, the viscometer, would be uh, mounted in a uh, temperature control bath. This bath uh, is unique because it's capable of uh, reaching temperatures, uh, subambient temperatures, down to minus 20 or minus 40 degrees C. There's a requirement for jet fuels to automate the uh, viscosity testing for jet fuels. Uh, the same system, the same bath can be automatically ramped up to plus 40 degrees C and run applications like diesel fuels. And there are specifications for uh, viscosity and diesel fuels. The uh, operation of the system is, uh, is uh, we think, quite unique. Uh, we've developed a, uh, what we call a filling station uh, the sample is syringed in to the filling station. At this point, the sample would uh, fall into the glass capillary viscometer. The temperature bath would automatically ramp. It'll pull the sample up, dry the viscometer, drop it to minus 20, let it stabilize. Uh, we have we have developed some, some excellent technology for temperature control. We can control the temperature of the test at minus 20 to plus or minus 0.01 degrees C. The test is then measured twice. So basically, uh, we're pulling the sample up the capillary and releasing it, and we're timing a fixed volume uh, out to a hundredth of a, a second. Uh, and then we calculate the uh, kinematic viscosity. Uh, the system uh, can print a report for an operator. It uh, can also, it automatically, it has a LIMS port. It can automatically uh, send data out through the LIMS port. The, uh, the data is uh, quite exceptional. Uh, we, our determinability on this test is uh, typically we're going to be better than 0.2%. Uh, frequently, we're, uh, we're going to be uh, inside of 0.1%. Uh, in this case, these are, uh, these are a series of uh, round-robin samples we've run, and the determinability, the average here is uh, 0.01 uh, uh, degrees or uh, percent. So that's, uh, it, it's quite good. The, uh, the system also has a, uh, has a lot of uh, in intelligence that we've built in. Uh, it's important because of different uh, climate uh, conditions, environmental conditions from lab to lab. Uh, we, we measure the temperature of the lab. We measure the, uh, the relative humidity. We know exactly what the dew point is in, in the particular lab that the system would live in. It automatically uh, brings the system to two degrees above dew point to clean the sample and then report it, and then we're ready to go again. All right, Mike, and it's also suited to doing batch testing, is it? Like I see you've got, you've got the computer, the, the USB port there for downloading all your information after having done a series of runs? Yes, that's correct. The, uh, the actual uh, computer is on board. Uh, we have also developed uh, some black box technology uh, in this system, so if you, you know, frequently or maybe infrequently, hopefully, uh, computers do uh, crash. Uh, hence the the jet vist and the black box technology. Uh, we we save all of the uh, relevant information. We we can uh, simply using a uh, uh, engineering stick or, or a supervisor stick. We can uh, we can uh, reprogram the system, or we could re if we needed to we could replace a uh, the computer 
install the stick, it automatically uh, reprograms the system. The operator doesn't have to do anything. What? The uh, system has also been designed uh, uh, for uh, easy uh, access to any component. Uh, the system uh, will actually pull apart all of the panels uh, on the system are removable. Uh, we have access to every area of the viscometer, left, right, rear, uh, and, and of course uh, inside. What's important too is uh, when, when you're running these types of tests, uh, there's a requirement that the viscometer must be uh, calibrated in an ISO 17025 uh, accredited lab, our lab is. Uh, we actually produce a, uh, a full series of uh, certified uh, viscosity standards for calibrating the, uh, the viscometers. Right, and what, what materials is this suited to testing? Jet fuels and other, other jet, types? Jet fuel, any, uh, any type of fuels. Uh, and they're typically going to be, jet fuels are typically done <laughs> at, at uh, minus 20. We can do hydraulics. Uh, we can do uh, transformer oils. There, there's a whole array of, of applications at subambient temperature that uh, we're capable of automating. And then, uh, and then when you get into uh, some of the uh, diesel fuels, the test specification is at plus 40 degrees C, uh, plus or minus 0.02 is what the uh, method calls for. And, uh, and we, can, we can automate those. We can actually, with a uh, second module, the bath and viscometer module, we could actually have two tests going. We could have a diesel running at plus 40. We could have a jet fuel or a hydraulic running at subambient simultaneously and uh, independently of each other. All right, Mike. Thanks for telling us about your kinematic viscometer. Thank you.